What's going on everyone? I'm Wayne Grayson and you're watching Equipment World. This is The Dirt, the construction and heavy equipment show. Coming up today on The Dirt, we're talking about four all new compact track loaders from ASV, the RT65, the VT70 high output, the RT75 and the RT75 heavy duty. These new and improved models make up a pretty substantial product introduction for ASV as the company says it wanted to reimagine every inch of these machines for this lineup refresh. ASV product line manager Buck Storley says the company has upgraded nearly every major feature found on these machines in an attempt to push them to the max. And that is why the company says it saw fit to tag these four new models as the ASV Max series. I've asked Buck to join us today on the dirt to discuss in depth these four new CTL models and we will get into all the nitty gritty details on all of the improvements that make these CTLs Max series. So let's get into it. Hey, Buck, welcome into the dirt. Thank you so much for joining us today, man. Hope you're doing well. Thanks, Wayne. Doing great here. Uh, it's been a big day for us with this new Max Series launch, but uh, we're having a lot of fun. So, But during today's product launch, it, it was mentioned that these new Max Series models have, have been in development for some time. How, how long ago did development on the new models start? And what were kind of the guiding principles for you guys in that development? So, yeah, the Max Series as a whole has been in development for about five years now. We've been working on various features of it. I mean, all the big features going in were really that maximum visibility, maximum comfort, maximum productivity, maximum reliability, kind of all those forefronts. And, um, you know, we started with, you know, the standout features you see right away is, is the cab features and the new all glass cab and all the different things we did in there with the display and the seating position and making more room. And, you know, those were the priorities going in. And those are things we, uh, well, we took quite a while getting there, but really, really excited to get this thing all rolled out today. Now, another one of the things that you guys mentioned uh, during the launch was, was that you wanted to kind of reimagine every inch of the machine. Is that something that you guys felt the compact track loader in general and not just your machines, but did you think the CTL was due for a rethinking or some kind of major upgrades? Uh, another th you know, term you used to describe these machines was premium. So in, in your minds, do, do, do these new Mac series machines, do they, do they kind of represent some kind of like elevation of the machine uh, as a whole or the idea of the compact track loader in general? So, you know, you want to think it, we wanted to think it through from a, from an operator's perspective and just not, you know, kind of the same. There's that sometimes uh, as, you know, as engineers, we get trapped in that, uh, that's the way we've always done it. And, and that's the way you should do it. And I guess trying to put that behind you is a big piece of it. And, uh, you know, if you think about the sides and the fact that you don't see the steel grating on the sides, you know, uh, getting away from that's the way we've always done it. And in many cases, you know, you can look to other industries, whether it be uh, agricultural or automotive or any of these, you know, places where um, sometimes the technology is much uh, farther ahead than it was in construction. We look at, okay, well, why have we always done it like this in construction? Why does it work there? Can we apply it here? And then, you know, how do we apply it? Being uh, a little more open in that, just thinking about, you know, things like the uh, rear window, uh, you know, pull cord rear window escapes have been uh, the norm forever, it seems, but they've been just an obstacle that uh, I think we kind of, that's just the way we always did it, right? Going to a roof hatch escape not only allowed us to have a better escape, but have a clearer picture through that rear window and improve visibility and, you know, several benefits that go along with it. Maybe we weren't thinking about then, but then when you start thinking, um, hey, this one feature, we may be able to apply it, um, several others come along with it. And, uh, and we kind of get away from those maybe normal traps that sometimes, um, you know, make compact track loaders harder to see out of or harder to get in and out of and those kind of things. So. Yeah, and, and I think that the main reason that that question kind of comes to mind for me is is that, you know, it, this was definitely like a really big focus on, on the cab, on comfort, on visibility. But typically, like, when we're talking about generation to generational changes, you might see a couple of these new features or a couple of these advances or improvements to, to some of these features. But you guys introduced, I mean, just you know, several, I mean, so many, like probably, I, you know, if I, if I actually went through and counted them all, probably more than a dozen. So that's kind of why that, that question comes to mind is like, uh, it wasn't just a few kind of improvements that you guys made. You guys are changing a lot of the things 
that you know are have been come to to be expected out of a CTO. You guys are kind of advancing and improving upon that, right? Yeah, yeah. I think um, you know, especially when you look at that top portion, the operator surrounding in the cab area, um, not a lot of commonality with what we had uh, just a year ago. So um, we didn't we didn't confine ourselves into. Uh, improving on the existing it was more an open book in how do we you know make it the way we want it right so let's start over with that and make this cab in a manner that that uh we want it to be not one that we have to be because we're carrying through this concept or that concept so um yeah pretty cool that we we had an open book there now going back to something that i was just talking about my biggest takeaway from these machines and and we actually heard similar reactions from from both dealers and customers today during the presentation was what a huge improvement in visibility these machines benefit from. Specifically, they feature 360 degrees of visibility with some unique design changes. Tell us about that new design and just how much easier it is to see out of this cab. How, and how did you guys pull off some of this wraparound glass design? Good question. You know, I, uh, a number I threw at you earlier today was 62% uh, more visible area. So if you think about that, um, you know, making that area something visual, something we can see through all of a sudden really opens things up. That's a, that's a huge number when you put, you know, put it all into perspective. Um, you almost have to get in this cab to truly appreciate it. I, I wish, uh, you know, you were here today and we could sit down in it and all of a sudden you see the uh, vast difference and vast improvement it is over really anything on the market today. But, you know, we started with, uh, uh, you know, getting rid of additional metal along the sides and then thinking about even the glasswork, how do you reduce framework around it? Um, simple improvements like uh, the side pillars, when you sit in the machine and you look forward and you see where the switches and things are on the side pillars in the past designs has always just been kind of big boxes. Um, now you'll see they're formed and actually tilted towards the operator slightly to go with his line of sight. So anytime there's an object in the way, it's shaped in a way that it takes uh, the minimal amount of maybe a head lean or a turn to see around that object. So trying to shrink every corner and every object and go into molded parts and things instead of uh, big welded boxes and squares can really, it's all those uh, little details that add up to quite a bit. So now when you sit in it, you've got that 360 degree visibility, your side glass goes down lower so you can see the track and see the ground closer to the machine or see the bucket edge sooner and closer to the object. Now, one big piece to the improved visibility on these machines is, is a new three panel rear window. That's also an exclusive, an industry exclusive to these machines. Could you tell us a little bit more about that, the development of that, the, the design that went into it? It's, uh, it's an extension of the side glass that goes back to start creating that third panel. And then, and then you get uh, you know, a traditional rear window molded to that. And, and all in all, you know, it all becomes a see-through surface. In the rear, you know, as you turn your head, um, one of the ongoing challenges with track loaders has always been these blind spots that you get in the corners. As you turn your head and look, there's a blind spot there. We actually took those pillars that support the cab and moved them slightly forward and then went to a three panel rear window. Instead of a traditional single flat plane, the three panel plane takes that blind spot and moves it closer to your actual pivot point. So when you're in a track loader and you're pivoting on your center axis, uh, the closer you can have that blind, blind spot to that center axis, the less it actually is harmful to you. So now you can actually turn your head and your blind spot is not where your machine is actually moving. You know, it's, it's ahead of you, so it's not bothering you any further. So those, uh, those fine details really added up to just, uh, you know, like I said, again, an experience. I want to put you in the cab so you can really understand how much better it is. Obviously that, you know, when we're, whenever we're talking about more glass uh, on a CTL, some of, some, some, some of your competitors have actually started to introduce some, some more glass as well. I, I don't think to this extent, though, but whenever we talk about more glass in the cab, I think guarding is an issue that comes up. Safety is an issue that comes up. What have you guys uh, kind of done with the design of this to introduce more glass while also keeping the operator safe? Yeah, great question. So, you know, obviously through all the testing, we're looking at all those things, making sure that we have the structure and the durability there for that to hold up. Um, you know, tempered glass throughout the unit, uh, safety glass in that manner to, to be as strong as it can be. And then structurally, you know, the glass is not the structure. There's still a structural cab there that has FOPS and ROPS testing um, and even level two FOPS testing. So a 
higher um, grade of, of strength and protection than we were even, even able to offer in, in the prior design. So, um, you know, those things really add up to a, 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 a nice, you know, visual cab and, and safer from the aspect that now I can really see what's around me and I'm not, you know, as likely to bump into things. And then, you know, we also have our heavy duty guarding package. So if you've got that extreme operator who's in, uh, you know, you're, you're in the woods and you're worried about falling trees or large falling objects, um, our level two FOPS package and our heavy duty package, you can actually add metal uh, side screens over the top of the glass if you desire. You can add rear guarding, you can add uh, uh, front poly door. So we've got all kinds of options to really, uh, you know, make the machine ready for battle per se, if you're, if you're in that environment and concerned about any of that. Now, another big improvement is the new cab that we've been talking about and, and just how much more room that you guys have managed to cram in this thing. What, what specific things led to the increased roominess of this new cab design? The width was the first object. So we actually widened the cab. The interior dimension is two inches wider than, than the unit it replaced. So um, that width carries throughout the whole cab space. So it all becomes a little bit larger right away. Um, and then we focused on around the operator, the area you really sit in. I mean, that's the area that matters. All this kind of airspace around you um, doesn't have a lot of impact. But when you sit down, um, you know, how much space you actually have in the area you're sitting, that is where a lot of our focus came. And that's where uh, features like a single-sided lap bar. So a lap bar that swings down from the side instead of coming down beside the operator, it, uh, it still provides that frontal protection that you're looking for from a lap bar, but it doesn't take the space from the sides. So that was a big one. And then that allowed us to actually widen the armrest area. So there's uh, more space around the operator's hips. His, his rear end can spill over the seat further. You have more hip space, more elbow space, kind of all that area all of a sudden got bigger. And then we went down further, down towards the joysticks where Traditionally, in our design and competitive design, there's a lot of stuff down there. Maybe it's switches and panels and wires and things. And we tried to scoot all that stuff further away. And we actually were able to achieve in total uh, eight inches more space down there by the knees. So you can get those knees farther apart and just have a, a lot more room there, especially if you're a, you know, a bigger person with larger thighs, larger legs. You've got just a lot more room than we had before. And then lastly, we moved down to the footwell itself where your feet sit. And we lengthened that and reshaped that and we added up to four and a half inches more space down there so you could get your legs straighter for the taller operators and uh, you know I think you heard one of our operators who's been in the pilot machine uh, speak of it he was six foot seven and had uh, had some very positive things to say about the added room and kind of what that did for for those taller bigger operators so we really had to think about you know those frame people the larger frame the taller frame people and then you know, and then we added in all the adjustability, right, to the armrests and to the seat and those things to also be able to complement the smaller operator. So we kind of, by growing it, you get that, that big guy. And by having adjustability, we can still uh, accommodate the smaller operators as well. Yeah, and you just mentioned the adjustability of, of, those, uh, of those controls, the armrests and everything like that. And, and they actually have four-way adjustability, getting really kind of close to, to what you'd find in a car or truck and that was kind of some of the inspiration behind that. But but also, you guys, you, you just mentioned this too, kind of moving uh, a lot of the switches and controls uh, up a little bit and, and away from kind of the sides of the operator. Could you talk about those the relocation of a lot of those switches um, and the kind of like the degree of adjustability that, that are found on these armrests and controls? So kind of start with the switches. You know, historically, you'd find switches down on uh, maybe by your armrests or by your controls in many cases. Um, we actually moved all that stuff up to the pillars, we'll call them, right up beside the door. So the main reason there is to get them in the operator's uh, peripheral vision. So when you're running, you don't have to look away from there to go ahead and make adjustments to your control or flip a switch, those type of things. So getting them there, get them in the peripheral vision so you have easy access to them. They're also a straight reach from your control. So you don't have to you know, stop operating and hunt. You can reach up, flip the switch on or off. And, uh, and continue working. So, and then, you know, with that, that complemented opening up that space I was talking about where you're down there trying to use it as an operator. We got more room there and we uh, implemented our four-way adjustable controls down in that space. Um, you know, we see uh, competition bringing forward 
for aft adjustments. Slider controls is becoming common in the CTL industry. But, you know, we wanted to go a little further. Can we do better than that? You know, you mentioned the automotive world with our six-way power seats and those things. It's that type of technology that spurs, um, you know, what can we do more? Where does the operator need these things to be? And with our four-way, you get not only that four-aft adjustment, but you also can do height adjustment, you can do angle adjustment, and you can do width adjustment. So, um, you know, we all have a little different preference on how we like to sit, and that's uh, really what we're trying to achieve there with, with all those different adjustments so all those operators can find the right spot. Now, since we were just kind of discussing those, 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 the relocation of those switches and everything freeing up that space for more adjustability in the armrest and the controls, I, I also, you know, since we're in this kind of general area, talk a little bit about that new touchscreen. There's a new seven inch touchscreen display on these new machines. Talk about kind of the added functionality that you get through that new screen. So lots of stuff implemented there with that new seven inch touchscreen. Um, you know, first just, uh, better gauge visibility than we've ever had in the past. So a six gauge home screen. So you've got all the kind of the big gauges and main things there, hour meter, trip meter. And then we've also added a new feature, uh, operator job clock. So that's kind of cool. When they turn a the job clock on, um, you know, you can associate that to a job and anytime the engines are running, the job clock will be uh, taking hours and keeping track of that amount that's used. It's also monitoring the fuel consumption of the machine to that job, um, idle time, things like that. So um, job clock's really cool new feature for, you know, when you're ready to build a job or you want to monitor a job, you can really see what you have into it and what, uh, you know, what that machine did there on that job. So, uh, you know, along with that, several other features, we've added uh, key code entry or access to the machine. So operator and owner can, can give an operator a code to access the machine, start the machine, run the machine. Um, they can essentially have as many codes as, as required and they can add or subtract those. So, um, you know, anti-theft improvements there, obviously. Um, service monitoring, it's got full maintenance monitoring in it, looking at uh, the machine uh, service intervals, 500 hours, 250 hours, 1,000 hours, as an example. And when we hit these service intervals, the display has got the capability to pop up a wrench on the screen and let the operator know something is due. The operator simply touches the screen at the wrench and it pops them in and actually tells them exactly what needs to be done. Maybe it's uh, to tighten the track or to change the engine oil um, as examples. So, you know, there's in-depth features like that. And then uh, we also integrated the backup camera into that screen. So that screen can be uh, a full seven inch uh, backup camera if the customer desires, or it's got the capability to have uh, partial gauge and partial camera uh, visibility. So there's a lot of things in there I could go on and on, but those are some of the big highlights uh, without, again, getting in there and starting pushing buttons. Now, we talked about it earlier uh, with the, the, this new uh, roof hatch. We also talked about the three-panel window, and those kind of jump out to me as kind of two really kind of unique innovations that you guys have come up with this, with this, with this new machine. But um, the emergency exit uh, or the new roof hatch in, in particular, what, what kind of pushed you guys to go ahead and implement, uh, implement that? It's, it's definitely a different take on the emergency exit for these CTLs. Um, but but what kind of pushed you guys to, to, to kind of go ahead and say, you know what, th this is a specific, this emergency exit is a specific thing that we can do better on? Well, you know, I mean, you just think about the general presence of, uh, of heat and exhaust and things that are going out the backs. Rear exits, you know, traditionally have always been the way. But, you know, tier four final engines, as, as they've progressed, they build more heat. They have uh, charge air coolers. There's more and more things that happen back there in the engine bay. So, uh, you know, that leads us to start thinking about there's, there's got to be a better way. And, uh, you know, that roof is naturally uh, a better way out. We don't have to go over the engine bay and so forth. And, again, it's technology that's been used in the past in some forestry industries, things like that, but just not really uh, taken on in the construction industry. And, you know, we looked at it, its use in some other places and said, hey, that, that's a, a better way to do it. And then we went ahead and said, okay, what's the best way to do it, uh, you know, for our cab and to be able to maintain things like level two falling object protection. So um, being able to do a roof hatch and still have as good or better protection than solid roofs have had in the past um, kind of was the, the big, you know, thing we had to do a little bit different maybe than some other industries. 
Now, kind of rounding out the story on this vast increase in comfort that this new cab brings is, is a new HVAC system that you guys have implemented here. And, and the result is some very, very low in cab temperatures and a best in class cab pressurization rating. Talk about that new HVAC system and, and the development of making sure that this new cab isn't just roomy, but, but also has a highly variable and, a, and adjustable climate. That's really responsive to it, to whatever the operator is really trying to dial in. So, you know, it, our, one of our you know, big objectives there was better air distribution and ventilation in this cab. So this one's a seven vent system. Um, in our prior design, we had good cooling, uh, very good cooling, in fact, and we had, uh, we had good pressurization, as much as 50 pascals in our, in our old design. But with this new design, one of the things we wanted to improve on was distribution. So not just to be cool or pressurized, but to be well distributed so the operator feels, uh, you know, his feet are the same temperature as his head or his, uh, you know, front window is defrosted the same as the side and the rear windows in those colder days. So good distribution was an objective and then maintaining that high pressurization. So um, this cab, you know, is sealed uh, better than anything we've done in the past and it's got a good outside air intake. So in total, you know, getting 50 pascals or greater pressurization um, really five times what we tested for our competitors. So uh, anywhere from five times or more. So when I say industry leading, um, by a large margin, we're feeling confident about where it's at as we compared it to, you know, competitors. And then we did further testing with outside sources. And, you know, as I mentioned earlier, got the same feedback from, uh, from outside sources that tested us as in the best compact cab we've tested. So, um, you know, if you combine those two things, the pressurization, what that brings is cleanliness for the operator. So keeping dust, dirt, and debris out, that's what pressurization is about. And then temperature, obviously being able to control it, whether it's 118 degrees Fahrenheit above zero or 30 below Fahrenheit zero, we want to be able to control that in cab temperature. Those were our design goals. And, uh, you know, we, we hit it and we're pretty, pretty pumped about it. So it should be something that's ready to go to work regardless of your environment. We've talked about uh, more room, more you know, uh, more variability in the climate controls, more even distribution thanks to that new HVAC system. But what are some other kind of like creature comfort type features in this new cab that operators should know about? Yeah, so I think we talked a little bit about just the positioning of controls and positioning of switches. You know, those are creature comforts sometimes we overlook, but just. Uh, things being intuitive to the operator as you run it. You want those switches and those things you're messing with all the time to be right there in front of you. Um, those were, you know, switches were one of the things. The new radio is another one, Bluetooth radio option in it. So we can Bluetooth or pair our phone to the machine and, and uh, play our tunes list, or we can, uh, we can talk on the phone while operating it. You know, those are big ones. The, the HVAC controls, getting those also right there in front of you where you can get at them um, easy ones. We, we put in a, an iPhone holder as well as a standard charge port there, a USB port that we can plug that in and, and that also pairs to the radio. So, um, you know, some of these things, again, you're getting used to that being kind of the norm in automotive and, uh, you know, we're bringing that to compact track loaders to make sure that kind of when you sit down in that, you get that, uh, that same warm and cozy feel you get when you sit down in your car. Buck, with all of these uh, comfort and visibility improvements in mind, talk a little bit about where you guys see these Max Series model, the, the place they have in the market in terms of how you guys stack up with the competition. Now, you guys feel, uh, you alluded to this earlier, but you guys feel like these machines are, are kind of on, a, on another level whenever you're, you're talking about comparisons, right? Yeah, so we, you know, we want, from the ground up, we want our track loaders to be that optimum experience, right? Best in class ride package, best in class performance, best in class operator experience. And, uh, you know, starts down on the ground with our suspended undercarriages and our, and our tracks and kind of moves up now into our cab. And we want to make sure that operator experience is truly, you know, premium and best in class. He's comfortable. He can stay there all day long. It's important from, you know, from an owner to the operator. If you own a business, you want to have operators who want to come to work, want to stay working hard, want to stay in that cab and want to stay with your company. So operator retention in many cases is about, you know, having the right equipment. If he can go down the street and get in a better piece of equipment, you might lose that operator tomorrow. So um, if we can keep him in a seat, keep him comfortable, keep him working, those are the things we, we really wanted to achieve. And then, you know, with that, we wanted to make sure that we're still 
extremely competitive from, from a price point standpoint. So sometimes people, we talk about these premium features and what we've brought forward and people automatically assume um, maybe that's not for me. Maybe that's an expensive uh, track loader, but the bottom line is we brought these features forward and, uh, and boy, we really, one of our design goals also was to hold our price. So coming into this year, uh, we expect to deliver these features and we're delivering them uh, in a sense for free had very similar to where we were last year, uh, which makes the machines, you know, lots of features in them, but still competitive. So we want to think premium performance, but we want to think return on investment. It was one of the big, you know, design objectives is our customers desire return on investment. So they got to, they're willing to make a certain amount of investment. It's got to provide return. And, uh, you know, those are things we're after. And then we, you know, we can configure this max series to really whatever that customer's um, position is, you know, some guys, maybe they don't need a backup camera or a seven inch color display we have uh, what we call our base packages that would still get you that emergency roof exit advantage, still get you all the visibility we delivered, still get you the performance that ASV machines brings, but maybe, you know, you don't need the bells and whistles. We, uh, we have those options and configurations as well in, in the Max series. So. Now, you just mentioned the PosiTrack undercarriage. Uh, have any changes been made to this undercarriage, or, or is this really the same system that, that operators have, have, have known and loved, just, just kind of complementing uh, the, these, these new updated Max models? I mean, honestly, the only constant is change. So, you know, we've been doing tracks and track undercarriages since 1991. We were the first company to pioneer compact track loaders and, uh, you know, build them here in the U.S. and you know, they've been constantly changing since then. You know, in the mid 2000s, we came out with our single rail designs that you see today where we really opened up that undercarriage and helped get material out, really helped wheel and bearing life and those things. And then, you know, brought all metal face seals to these undercarriages and doing things there. And, you know, with the Max series, we just have continued on that tradition of continuous improvement, right? So today you see single rail designs, all metal face seals, high drive, internal positive drive sprockets, um, you know, improved axles and axle designs and suspension designs in general. And I guess you add it all up, the big thing with, you know, with the Max series is now we're able to offer, you know, two year, 2000 hour warranty, not only on the machine, but on the track itself. Um, you know, no one else is doing that. So it says some things about where we, where we are today in the designs and how um, confident we are in the designs. And then with the Max series, we also tack on top of that our track anti-derailment guarantee. So a, uh, an additional warranty guaranteeing derailment, you know, if, if it came off, we'd pay the dealer to come out, put it back on for you, travel and the whole nine yards. And, and uh, we're able to say that and do that and warrant that because it just doesn't happen. They don't come off. So um, when you think about the development and the progression of undercarriages, man, it's just they're, they're, uh, a few years back, we wouldn't have been able to do those kind of things, and offer those kind of warranties and stay in business. But today, you know, we've taken it with uh, continuous improvement and, and all those improvements just kind of roll into the max series. This, I feel like this is a good opportunity to kind of talk about each of the each of the four models or just kind of address the, each of them uh, kind of kind of briefly and, and, and talk about all four of the models in this max series and and specifically who you guys kind of see each of these models being for what kind of separates them from each other, or differentiates them from each other uh, in, in your minds. Sure. Yeah, I'll start with our RT65 and our VT70 models. So they are, um, you know, 65 to 74 horsepower units in that, you know, they're, they're, those two are going to go from 1,925 ROC to 2,300. They're kind of that core um, mid-size compact track loader. So uh, the big difference there being one being radial lift and one being vertical lift. So depending on what the customer needs, you know, the, the guy who does a lot of time loading uh, tends to lean towards the vertical. Um, the guy who does more ground work or mid-height work would lean towards the radial. So, you know, we have those options and appealing to that customer base, which is uh, one of the largest markets in the compact track loader industry. So those two machines uh, just have a lot of, you know, features and things to, to compete in that group. And then we roll into our RT75, which would be a 74 horsepower unit in, uh, you know, more of a mid to large frame size. So that machine with its 2,750 pound ROC and the HD at 2,800, you know, more lift capacity, more power, high flow. Um, and then, you know, 
with those machines, your 15 inch ground clearance and 18 inch wide track, they're just extremely capable track loaders in, uh, in extreme terrain. And then we have our dual level suspension under those as well, which, uh, you know, suspended wheels and suspended torsion axles, another industry only feature um, we've got there. So um, those models, we did even up the performance on them. The 2750 and 2800 rated operating capacities are up uh, about 100 to 150 pounds from last year. So more capabilities in them. And then, you know, kind of lastly, I talked a little bit about our HD model, our heavy duty, RT75 heavy duty. That one uh, gravitates more towards the um, brush cutting operator, you know, with uh, heavy duty guarding and the quarter inch Lexan front door helps to uh, protect from thrown objects and things like that that are common in the in the brush cutting industry. And then a standard reversing fan to help with cooling in those high dust, high debris applications that fan can actually reverse and, and clean it out. Now you alluded to this a little bit, talking about the increased ROCs on some of the larger models, but uh, talk a little bit more about performance. Are these the same engines that, that were in the models that preceded them? Are they the same horsepower ratings? You know, have, have there been any kind of hydraulic improvements, things like that? They, they have uh, held the same engine powers there. So 67 horsepower in our, in our smallest one, an RT65, and 74 horsepower in the rest. So I'm um, kind of staying at that 74 horsepower line for the obvious reasons of the tier four final requirements there. Um, but, you know, we looked at uh, other things throughout the system, things like hoses and wiring and other performance uh, or I would say reliability upgrades were really the big piece. We, we felt like we really had uh, best in class performance. If uh, our operator experiences have been really positive feedback as far as how these machines run, how much power they have, how they push, how the high flow works, those type of things. Our focus on the max series maybe wasn't as much there as it was in, okay, let's make sure these things are as reliable and durable as we absolutely can be. So we worked on, uh, we went to new wiring harnesses with sealed fuse panels. We worked on hoses and hose routing to make sure that they were as well done as, as we absolutely could. And then we looked at the comfort piece on the cab and all of those pieces. So we've always been known for that performance. Now we, we can sit down before you ever turn the key, you can sit down in the machine and go, wow, you know, the, the comfort is there too. So all right, no, uh, you, you kind of alluded to this a little bit uh, with, with uh, some of the, uh, the, the new routing and, and a little bit more of the, the durability uh, kind of concerns in, in terms of the design of this machine too, but could you talk a little bit about maintenance, ease of maintenance? What are, what are some of the maintenance spots or, or features on this machine? I think we talked earlier about the maintenance alerts that you can get through the touchscreen, but in terms of doing your, your daily checks uh, and other kind of uh, maintenance, um, what, what does that look like? Even, even if you've got to tilt the cab up, I know that there's some improvements there as well. Question. So yeah, there's that technical piece within the within the display that kind of tells you what you have to do, but then there's also the physical piece of how do you do it, and uh, you know, serviceability is a, is another focus for us. So it kind of starts you know in the back of our machines. If you look at all of our designs, they have a three panel rear hood, so we can tilt the hood up as well as the sides out, and then we actually have uh, swing out and lean out rear radiators and oil coolers. So. Altogether, you've got that four direction access to the engine. It really gives you good access there in the rear. Um, that's a big focus that is definitely best in class. Many compact track loaders, if you look at them, they just have a single swinging rear door. Our four panel rear really opens things up and you can see that engine and access things there. And then, you know, in the Max series, we made improvements to the access of the fuse panels and, and relays and things like that. They removed um, into more accessible areas, uh, a main one in the engine bay for the engine area, another one in the cab for the cab area. Um, just became easier to get at, cleaner, sealed, that kind of thing. So with a sealed design, you pull the cap off, everything's clean in there, makes it easier for the service guy to do his work. And then we'll move to the side of the loader. You can look at things like our, uh, our loader pins. You know, each of our loader pins has a grease circ located on the end of the pin. Whereas, you know, in some designs, you kind of got to peek your head up underneath and that, that zerk may be in the center of a pin or whatever. By putting them out on the end of pins, you just make it that much easier and quicker for an operator to walk by, grease the machine, not miss one, not take as long to do it. And then you roll around to the front, you, you mentioned the cabs. So we do have tilting cabs on all these models. Um, and that was another design improvement over our previous design. We actually... Uh, change the cab bolt positioning and access so we could get in there easier with more traditional ratchet or imp impact tools 
um, you know, instead of box end wrenches and that type of thing. So again, making that quicker and easier to tilt those cab um, if you have to go underneath there for something. Buck, you've got these four new Max model CTLs and, and they are direct replacements for the four models that came before them, but the lineup still includes non-Max models in the RT25, 40, and 50, as well as the larger RT120 and the 120's forestry model. Are we gonna see Max versions uh, of those machines uh, down the line as well, or, or do you kind of like this, this Max lineup kind of sitting in that kind of uh, bread and butter part of, uh, of the market for these machines? Well, you're bound to at some point to ask questions that I can't answer, right? So, <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's obvious we're tackling this heart of the market, the uh, highest volume compact track loader segment first. We're, we're going after it with these, uh, with these new designs and these new cabs. And, and uh, you can tell from, from our excitement in these designs that we would like to carry the technology further and, uh, and expand on it. But, you know, as I said, I can't really speak to that a whole lot yet, what the future brings. But, uh, you know, ASB isn't done innovating. We'll just say that. Well, Buck, man, this has been awesome. Uh, in incredible uh, product launch today. Really great kind of presentation uh, during during the launch. Like you said, wish we could have been there. But in terms of a, a virtual launch, it was about as good as I think you could possibly get. And thank you for, for taking even more time to talk to us today on The Dirt. We definitely appreciate it, man. And uh, yeah, be well, man. And, and thank you again for your time. Yeah, thank you. Really appreciate having us. And, uh, you know, hope, hope your viewers can get out there, check us out on ASBI.com or get down and uh, see this new product at the dealer. There's nothing like sitting in it to really uh, experience what we're talking about. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for us here today on The Dirt. I really appreciate Buck stopping by and joining us for this conversation and giving us so many great kind of details and insights into the development of these four new Max Series compact track loaders. But we also want to hear what you guys think. Be sure to leave us a comment below telling us what you think of the new loaders, letting us know if you have any questions. We'd love to hear your thoughts, so leave us a comment below. And if you like this video and found the information in it useful in any kind of way in your next machine purchase or machine rental, do us a favor and hit the like button below. It really does help our channel out. And if you want more videos on the latest in construction equipment, gear, trucks, and more, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell turn on notifications so you're getting up to the minute alerts whenever we drop a new video all right guys thank you so much again for watching we will see you next time